Welcome to Cryptonomics. In this episode, we will show you how to calculate if the future value of the network justifies the current price of a cryptocurrency with something called the equation of exchange. In other words, how do we calculate if the cryptocurrency is over or undervalued? Check out this video if you want to understand our next valuation video we will do on Oh My's Go and other coming valuation videos. We have built a model which is linked in the description below, which we recommend you check out during and after you have viewed this video. In this video, we will be showing a model to understand if a cryptocurrency is over or undervalued based on its utility value. Since all cryptocurrencies can't really be defined as a currency because many of functions along the line of a commodity or other type of asset, we will start using the term crypto asset. Crypto assets aren't companies and as such you can't apply popular valuation tools for equities on the cryptocurrencies. Instead, you can use the equation of exchange MV equals PQ to derive each year's current utility value. So instead of discounting a company's cash flow based on future expectations, you discount the future utility value back to the present to get a rational market price. The valuation method um, in this video is inspired by Chris Bernisky's models for value in crypto assets from the book Crypto Assets, The Innovative Investor's Guide to Bitcoin and Beyond. And in this video, we will explain and show you how to value cryptocurrencies in just three steps. In the equation of exchange, there are four variables which are important to understand. These are important because they will be used to determine the value of the utility network. The equation of exchange uses the four variables M, which is just the size of the asset base, V, which is the velocity of the asset, P, which is the price of the digital resource, and Q, which is the quantity of the digital resource. Together, they form the equation MV equals PQ. The absolutely first thing to note is that P does not stand for the price of the crypto asset, but rather the price of the resource being provisioned from the crypto network. This could be the price per gigabyte of storage in Filecoin, the fee from online payment transactions in the request network, or the price per contract in the smart contract blockchain like Ethereum or NEO. So basically, the price to utilize the crypto assets network. Similarly, Q, or quantity, does not stand for the supply of the coin, but rather the quantity of the resource provisioned. In the case of Filecoin again, that would be gigabytes of storage. For request network, it would be total transactions. In Ethereum and NEO's case, it would be total outstanding contracts. So multiplying the price and the quantity gives it the total cash flow of the network economy. An example of this would be if we were to make a crypto asset called the Cryptonomics coin. The Cryptonomics coin will be used to host videos on the blockchain. The price in this case will be the price of hosting one gigabyte of video. So in our example, it can be one coin at the current value of one US dollar to host one gigabyte. The quantity will be the number of videos hosted. Let's say it's 100,000 gigabytes of videos for simplicity. This means the economy of our network will be 1 times 100,000. So that's 100,000 coins or the equivalency of $100,000 at the current market price. Next, we want to calculate the velocity of the asset or V. This is basically the number of times an asset has changed hands in a given time period, for example, one year. To calculate velocity, you divide the average transactional volume by the average market cap over the time period that was chosen. So let's say there are 1 million cryptonomics coins in total, and they have been exchanged 3 million times during the last year. First, you multiply the total supply by the US dollar value of the coin. So that's 1 million coins times 1 US dollar equals 1 million US dollars. And that's the market cap of the cryptonomics coin. Then you divide the transactional volume by the market cap to get the velocity. So that's 3 million divided by 1 million equals 3. This means that each cryptonomics coin has roughly been exchanged three times each during the past year. Note that this will not be a perfect calculation of velocity since it does not include second layer transactions like the Lightning Network. This means that the velocity will be rather conservative, especially since a lot of coins are held as an investment or in speculation and are not actively being exchanged. Last, the size of the asset base M is calculated by dividing the network economy by the velocity. So for the cryptonomics coin used in this example, this would result in an asset base of $33,333. After the asset base has been calculated, we can find the token utility value by dividing the asset base by the tokens in circulation. Let's say that for the cryptonomic coin, all tokens are pre-mined and in circulation. 
However, this is not the case for all coins out there. In Bitcoin's case, not all coins have been mined, and in NEO's case, there are a large amount held by the founders for a later usage. This means the token utility value for the cryptonomics coin will be 0 0.0333 dollars. So, the value of a network is of course not just based on how it's used today, but also how it will be used tomorrow. Therefore, it is important to calculate the adoption rate of a crypto asset. Note that this is the hardest part of the calculation and will take a lot of research on the target market to be able to make qualified assumptions. There are several factors that are important to judge when calculating your adoption rate. One, how much will supply increase per year? Two, when will the cryptocurrency launch and when will the adoption phase start? Three, what will the penetration rate of the network be on the total target industry market per year? Four, what will be the proximal maximal share the network will take of its target market? Five, when will the network hit 10% of its saturation percentage? And six, what is the amount of time it will take for the network to grow from 10% to 90% of its saturation peak? In our example, we will use a target market of online video platforms like Vimeo or YouTube. And this market will be worth $100 billion in 10 years. For simplicity, we assume that our price and quantity of hosting will grow during these 10 years in a way so the cryptonomics coin will have a market penetration of 1% in 10 years. This yields a network economy, P times Q, of $1 billion for the entire network. These are not just made up numbers. You should get accurate forecasts that line up with your target market. Check out the forecasts by different research firms and institutes like McKinsey Global Institute to more accurately judge your assumptions. With these assumptions, we can build a model of how the network economy, the asset base, and the token utility value will grow year on year. And using the previously stated assumptions and the same velocity as previously in the video, we will have an asset base, or M, of $0.33 billion. Our token utility value in 10 years will then be $0.3 billion divided by circulating supply of 1 million coins. This will result in a token utility value of $333 in 10 years. But wait, we're not done. First, we have to know what those $333 are worth today. Discount rates are used in equity valuations to determine what future cash flows are worth today. This is because $1 today is worth more to a person than $1 in a year. This is because of opportunity cost. But crypto assets don't have cash flows. This means that we will have to discount the future utility value to the present. This is done by using a discount rate which accounts for the risk of an early stage network. This is because most investors want to be rewarded for holding assets with higher risk. Otherwise, they will hold risk-free assets like a government bond. This is why the discount rate is also called the expected rate of return. Typically, when valuing crypto assets, we advise to use a discount rate in the 30 to 50% range, which is about three to five times higher than a risky equity. The high discount rate is based on the current unknowns of the cryptocurrency industry. Basically, no one knows what shape or form the industry will take in the future. The discount factor used to determine the fair value of a cryptocurrency is calculated using your discount rate in the formula below. In our cryptonomics coin example, we judge that this coin is very risky. So we use a discount rate of 50%. According to the formula that Niklas just showed, this will yield us a discount factor of 57.6. Now you have your discount factor and you want to use this to find the current fair valuation of the crypto asset of your choice. Do this by taking the token utility value we calculated earlier and divide this by the discount factor. This means the cryptonomics coin token utility value $333 in 10 years is actually only worth $5.77 today. If the cryptonomics coin is currently priced higher than this on the market, it is by definition overvalued. And if it's under this price point, well, it's undervalued. It should be noted once again that this model should not be used as a price target like in equity analysis models. Instead, these models should be used to understand what kind of adoption of the network is needed to justify the price today. But this is likely the most powerful model currently available to get an understanding what a crypto asset should be worth. So we really recommend you check out the model in the description. Thank you for watching another episode of Cryptonomics. If you like this video and you want to see more valuations, please hit the subscribe button, give us a like and leave a comment on what we should value next.